السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد All thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may his peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger, his family, his companions and those who follow them until the end of times. Welcome to lesson number 185 of Tafsir al-Jalalain. Alhamdulillah yesterday we were able to cover verses 83 to 103 of Surah Al-Anbiya. So inshallah today we'll pick up right where we left off with verse number 104. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim La yasma'oona hasisaha Wa hum fi mashtahat anfusuhum khalidoon لا يحزنهم الفزع الأكبر وتتلقاهم الملائكة هذا يومكم الذي كنتم توعدون يوم نطوي السماء كطي السجل للكتب كما بدأنا أول خلق نعيده وعدا علينا إنا كنا فاعلين وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ إِنَّ فِي هَذَا لَبَلَاغًا لِقَوْمٍ عَابِدِينَ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ قُلْ إِنَّمَا يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدٌ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ آذَنْتُكُمْ عَلَى سَوَاءٍ وَإِنْ أَدْرِي أَقْرِيبٌ أَمْ بَعِيدٌ مَا تُوعَدُونَ إنه يعلم الجهر من القول ويعلم ما تكتمون وإن أدري لعله فتنة لكم ومتاع إلى حين قال رب احكم بالحق وربنا الرحمن المستعان على ما تصفون قال الإمام جلال الدين المحلي رحمه الله تعالى يوما منصوب بأذكر مقدرا قبله نطو السماء كطي السجل اسم ملك للكتاب صحيفة ابن آدم عند موته واللام زائدة أو السجل الصحيفة والكتاب بمعنى المكتوب واللام بمعنى على وفي قراءة للكتب جمعا كما بدأنا أول خلق عن عدم نعيده بعد إعدامه فالكاف متعلقة بنعيد وضميره عائد إلى أول وما مصدرية وعدا علينا منصوب بوعدنا مقدرا قبله وهو مؤكد لمضمون ما قبله إنا كنا فاعلين ما وعدنا ولقد كتبنا في الزبور بمعنى الكتاب أي كتب الله المنزلة من بعد الذكر بمعنى أم الكتاب الذي عند الله أن الأرض أرض الجنة يرثها عبادي الصالحون عام في كل صالح So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing uh, some of the scenes from the day of judgment so here in verse 104, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, يَوْمَ نَطْوِ السَّمَاءَ كَطَيِّ السِّجِلِّ لِلْكُتُبِ On that day, we will roll up the heavens like a scroll of writings. كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقٍ نُعِيدُ Just as we produce the first creation, we shall reproduce it. We shall reproduce creation just as we produced it the first time. وَعْدًا عَلَيْنَا This is a promise binding on us. Or this is our binding promise. إِنَّا كُنَّا فَاعِلِينَ We shall certainly do all these things. So here Imam Al-Mahalli rahimullah, he says the word يَوْمَ Then he speaks about a grammatical point. 
He says, Mansubun bi uthkur. That this word yawma is mansub because of the verb uthkur muqaddaran qablahu. That is understood, that is inferred before it. So, uthkur yawma. And remember the day, natwi sama'a. Remember the day, we will roll up the skies. We will roll up the heavens. Just like we roll up a scroll of writings. So he says the verb uthkur, muqaddaran qablahu, is inferred, is understood before the word yawm. And that's why the word yawm is mansub. Natwi sama'a. And remember the day we will roll up the sky. Like the rolling of a sijil. Now here Imam al-Mahalli says that a sijil is ismu malakin. Right? Is the name of an angel. And this angel is the one who is in charge according to this interpretation and according to this riwayah that he is the one who is in charge of rolling up the skies, right? كَطَيِّ السِّجِلِّ لِلْكِتَابِ And here, Imam al-Mahalli is using a different qira'ah. He's using a qira'ah in which the word kitab is being recited uh, in the singular form of the word. Whereas the qira'ah we are more familiar with uses the plural, لِلْكُتُب And he says the kitab here is صَحِيفَةِ تِبْنِ آدَمْ عِنْدَ مَوْتِهِ it is referring to the book of deeds. It's referring to the Sahifa. It's referring to the book of deeds of the son of Adam at the time of his death. And the lamb here, grammatically speaking, is additional. Right? It is something that is additional, grammatically speaking. So, ismu malakin, right? it is the name of an angel. So, remember the day when we will roll up the sky just like the angel will roll up the book of deeds or the scroll of deeds of the son of Adam at the time of his death. Because when we die, our deeds, at least our voluntary deeds and actions come to an end, except for the reward of what the Prophet ﷺ specified. If, you know, beneficial knowledge you leave behind or a righteous child that makes dua for you, right? Except for those things that were exempted, or excluded by the Prophet our book of deeds is rolled up and closed. That is one interpretation. He says, oh, as-sijillu as-sahifatu. Or, the word sijil itself is referring to the scroll. Wal-kitabu bima'na al-maktub. And the word kitab here means that which is recorded, that which is written. Wal-lamu bima'na ala. And the lam means ala. Yani, the, the scrolls that have been recorded upon. وَفِي قِرَاءَةٍ لِلْكُتُبِ جَمَعًا So another interpretation is on that day or remember the day we will roll up the heavens like a scroll of writings. And that is the, the, the translator chose that interpretation. Right, the translation that I'm uh, using uh, he went with the second interpretation that is being mentioned here by Imam Al-Mahalli. So Imam al-Mahalli rahimahullah, he's telling us that there are two ways that we can understand this portion of the verse. The first is remember the day when the sky or when we will roll up the sky, just like the angel will roll up the scroll of the son of Adam at the time of their death. Or the second meaning is remember the day when we will roll up the sky, just like a scroll of writings. كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقٍ نُعِيدُهُ Just as we started, just as we initiated the first creation, we will repeat it. And the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that just as He is the one who brought this universe and every single thing it contains into existence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will once again recreate everything and bring everyone back to life on the day of resurrection. So, كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقٍ عَنْ عَدَمٍ Just as we initiated or just as we began the initial creation from nothing, نُعِيدُهُ We will repeat it بَعْدَ إِعْدَامِهِ We will repeat it after it has come to an end. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
will bring every single living thing back to life on the day of resurrection. فالكاف, the kaf at the beginning of this portion of the verse kama is متعلقتن بنعيدو is attached or associated with the verb نعيدو وضميره and the pronoun goes back to the word awwal and the ma here is masdariyan yani the ma here is masdariya yani imam mahalli is highlighting the grammatical structure um, of this portion of the verse wa'dan alayna this is our binding promise and he says the word wa'dan is mansub grammatically speaking it is in the state of nasab be because of the verb wa'adna muqaddaran qablahu because of the verb wa'adna that is inferred that is understood to be before yani wa'adna wa'dan alayna we have made a binding promise upon ourselves wa huwa mu'akkid and this emphasizes li madmuni ma qablahu this emphasizes the subject of what comes before it and the day of judgment is going to happen without any doubt whatsoever it is an absolute certainty inna kunna fa'ilin we will truly do all of these things ma wa'adna whatever we have promised allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying without a doubt we will definitely surely do whatever we have promised وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ Surely, following the heavenly record, we decreed in the scriptures that my righteous servants will inherit the land. We wrote in the Zabur, as we did in earlier scripture, that my righteous servants will inherit the earth. So, وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ right, We wrote in the Zabur. Now, usually the word as zabur is referring to the scripture that was revealed to Dawood alayhi salam. But here, Imam al-Mahalli says it means al-kitab. وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ That we have certainly wrote in scripture. And he says, A كُتُبِ اللَّهِ الْمُنَزَّنَى that the word Zabur here is referring to all of this revealed scriptures of God that we recorded and we wrote down in all of the revealed scriptures min ba'di dhikri after a dhikra bi ma'na umm kitab and the dhikr here according to Imam al mahalli is referring to umm al kitab which is al lawh al mahfuz which is the preserved tablet where everything that's ever going to happen, everything that's happening now, everything that's happening in the past has been recorded. Alladhi عند Allah, that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anna al So we recorded and we wrote in all revealed scripture, just as it was recorded in the preserved tablet, the Anna al Arda, yani Arda al Jannah, that the earth, meaning the land of paradise. يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ That my righteous servants will inherit it. Meaning Jannah is for my righteous servants. So basically in simpler terms, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this is the decree, this is the decision, this is the judgment of God. That His righteous servants will inherit Jannah, meaning they are deserving of paradise. عَامٌ فِي كُلِّ صَالِحٍ and this is a general statement referring to all righteous individuals who believed in Allah and believed in the Messenger and believed in the last day. إِنَّ فِي هَذَا لَبَلَاغًا لِقَوْمٍ عَابِدِينَ There truly is a message in this for the servants of God. Surely this is sufficient for those devoted to worship. So إِنَّ فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ Truly in this Qur'an la balaghan kifayatan fi dukhul al-jannah there is sufficient guidance in order to enter into paradise li qawmin abidin for those who are devoted to worship amini nabi and those who act upon it and the Qur'an is enough the Qur'an is sufficient for us that if we recite it 
and we contemplate and think and ponder over its meanings and we act upon its guidance, that is enough for us to enter into paradise. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have sent you only as a mercy for the worlds. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ يَا مُحَمَّدُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. And we did not send you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِلَّا رَحْمَةً Except as a rahma, Except as a mercy and grace. إِلَّا rahma, Except as a source of mercy and grace. لِلْعَالَمِينَ for all the worlds, for the entire universe. Al insi wal jinni bik. And the al insi wal jinn. Mankind and jinn kind. Illa rahmatan ayli rahmati. Qala rahimahullah. Qul inna ma yuha ilayya anna ma ilahu kum ilahu wahidun ay. Ma yuha ilayya fi amri ilahi illa wahdaniyatu. Fahal antum muslimun. مُنْقَادُونَ لِمَا يُوحَى إِلَيَّ مِنْ وَحْدَانِيَّةِ الْإِلَاهِ وَالْإِسْتِفْهَامُ بِمَعْنَ الْأَمْرِ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا عَنْ ذَلِكَ فَقُلْ آذَنْتُكُمْ أَعْلَمْتُكُمْ بِالْحَرْبِ عَلَى سَوَاءِ حَالٌ مِنَ الْفَاعِلِ حَالٌ مِنَ الْفَاعِلِ وَالْمَفْعُولِ أَيْ مُسْتَوِينَ فِي عِلْمِهِ لَا أَسْتَبِدُّ بِهِ دُونَكُمْ لِتَأَهَّبُوا وَإِنْ مَا أَدْرِي أَقْرِيبٌ أن بعيد ما توعدون من العذاب أو القيامة المشتملة عليه وإنما يعلمه الله إنه تعالى يعلم الجهر من القول والفعل منكم ومن غيركم ويعلم ما تكتمون أنتم وغيركم من السر وإن ما أدري لعله أي ما أعلمتكم به ولم يعلم وقته فتنة اختبار لكم لِيَرَى كَيْفَ صُنْعُكُمْ وَمَتَاعٌ تَمَتُّعٌ بِهِ إِلَى حِينٍ أي إنقضاء آجالكم وهذا مقابل للأول المترجى بلعل وليس الثاني محلا للترجي قل وفي قراءة قال رب احكم بيني وبين مكذبية بالحق بالعذاب لهم أو النصر عليهم فعذبوا ببدر وأحد والأحزاب وحنين والخندق ونصر عليهم وربنا الرحمن المستعان على ما تصفون من كذبكم على الله في قولكم اتخذ ولدا وعلي في قولكم ساحر وعلى القرآن في قولكم شعر right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then addresses the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and says قُلْ إِنَّمَا يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٌ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Say, what has, been, what has been revealed to me is this. Your God is only one God. Will you then submit? Say, what is revealed to me is that your God is one God. Will you submit to him? So, قُلْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Prophet sallallahu directly. Say, right, say to your people, tell the people of Mecca, tell the mushrikun, إِنَّمَا يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ wahid. That it has been revealed to me that your ilah is one ilah. Your God is one God. أَيْمَا يُوحَى إِلَيَّ فِي أَمْرِ الْإِلَاهِ إِلَّا وَحْدَانِيَّتُهُ Meaning, Nothing has been revealed to me regarding the matter, regarding the affair of the God, except for His oneness. That is what has been revealed to me. That Allah is alone without any partner. That He alone is worthy and deserving of worship. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ So will you then submit? مُنْقَادُونَ لِمَا يُوحَى إِلَيَّ مِنْ وَحْدَانِيَةِ الْإِلَىٰ Will you submit? To what has been revealed to me in terms of the oneness of God? And this question here is, is conveying the meaning of a command. Although this is posed as a question, 
In reality, it's conveying the meaning of an amr, of a command. Yani aslimu. Submit to Allah. Submit to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa in fa in tawallu fa qul adantukum ala sawa. And if they turn away, then say, I have warned you all equally. Or I have proclaimed the message fairly to you all. Wa in adri. And I don't know if what you are threatened with is near or far. I do not know whether the judgment you have been promised is near or far. If they turn away from that. If they turn away and they refuse to submit to Allah. And they refuse to accept His oneness. Then say to them, آذنتكم أعلمتكم بالحرب على سواء آذنتكم I have informed you يعني أعلمتكم I have informed you and I have warned you بالحرب of war of battle between us على سواء equally He says على سواء here grammatically speaking is the حال is the circumstantial adverb from the فاعل or the مفعول A مُسْتَوِينَ فِي عِلْمِهِ Right, you need, it's all equal in his knowledge. لَا أَسْتَبِدُّ بِهِ دُونَكُمْ Right, I am not keeping this, you know, with me. I'm not sharing this knowledge with you. لِتَتَأَهَّبُوا So that you can prepare. Meaning, I've given all of you this equal, this fair warning. That if you don't accept, if you don't believe, then there's going to be conflict. So I've told you that. I have not kept this information to myself. لِتَتَأَهَّبُوا So that you can prepare. وَإِنْ أَدْرِي أَقَرِيبٌ أَمْ بَعِيدٌ مَا تُعَدُونَ وَإِنْ مَا أَدْرِي Meaning, I do not know that what you have been warned with. right? I do not know that the warning that you have been given, I don't know if it's close or far. I do not know if it's near or far. I do not know whether the judgment you have been promised is near or far. So ma tu'adun, what you have been promised is min al-adab, yani in terms of punishment. Awil qiyamati al-mushtamalati alayhi. Or the day of judgment that includes your punishment. I don't know if that is qareebun am ba'idun. I don't know if that's near or far. Innahu ya'lamu al-jahra min al-qawli wa ya'lamu ma taktumun. And he knows what you say openly and what you conceal. And he knows what you reveal and conceal. So, إِنَّهُ تَعَالَى Truly he, يَعْلَمُ Knows الْجَهْرَ What you reveal, what you say openly and publicly. مِنَ الْقَوْلِ وَالْفَعْلِ right, He knows what you say openly and publicly. And he knows what you do openly and publicly. مِنْكُمْ وَمِنْ غَيْرِكُمْ Not only from you but from everyone. Because Allah is Al-Alim, He is the All-Knowing. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا تَكْتُمُونَ and he knows what you hide, he knows what you conceal, he knows what you do secretly. Antum غَيْرُكُمْ مِنَ السِّرْ right, You and others, what you do in secret, Allah knows it. وَإِنْ أَدْرِي لَعَلَّهُ فِتْنَةٌ لَكُمْ وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حين. And I do not know if this delay is possibly a test for you and an enjoyment for a while. I do not know. This time may well be a test for you and enjoyment for a while. So in ma adri and I do not know. Laallahu perhaps a ma alam to kum bihi walam yu alam waktuhu. Yani that thing which I informed you about about this punishment from Allah or this destruction or the day of judgment and its time is unknown. Fitnatun ikhtibarun lakum that this is a fitna for you, this is a trial this is a test for you. لِيَرَى كَيْفَ صُنْعُكُمْ right, To see what you're going to do. That basically you've been given this time now. You've been given this reprieve. What are you going to do with it? وَمَتَاعٌ تَمَتَّعٌ إِلَى And perhaps it's an enjoyment for a while. A إِنْ قِضَاءِ أَجَالِكُمْ Until the end of your lifespans. Meaning until you leave this world. وَهَذَا مُقَابِلٌ لِلْأَوَّلِ الْمُتَرَجَّعَ 
He's saying this وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حين is uh, in accordance to that thing that is associated with the Taraji يعني لَعَلَّهُ فِتْنَةٌ لَكُمْ وَلَيْسَ الثَّانِي مَحَلًّا لِلْتَرَجِّي And the second thing right وَإِنْ لَعَلَّهُ فِتْنَةٌ لَكُمْ وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حين And the Thani is not a place of Taraji قُلْ وَفِي قِرَاءَةٍ قَالْ right. He's highlighting that there's two different Qira'at here He's using قُلْ Say And the Qira'a that we are more familiar with is قَالَ And he said رَبِّحْكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ My Lord Judge between us in truth. So, قُلْ يعني, Say, وَفِي قِرَاءَةٍ قَالَ He said, meaning the Prophet said, رَبِّي O oh my Lord أُحْكُمْ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ مُكَذِّبِيَّ Judge between me and those who reject me. بِالْحَقِّ with the truth. How? بِالْعَذَابِ لَهُمْ With punishment for them. أَوْ النَّصْرِ عَلَيْهِمْ or being granted victory over them. فَعُذِّبُوا So they were punished. Those who rejected and opposed the Prophet ﷺ, those who refused to believe in him, were punished bi Badrin. They were punished at the Battle of Badr. وَأُحُدٍ They were punished at the Battle of Uhud. Ahzab, They were punished during the Battle of the Confederates. وَحُنَيْن During the Battle of Hunayn, and Khandaq. وَنُصِرَ عَلَيْهِمْ right? And they were, uh, the, the Muslims were granted victory over them. وَرَبُّنَا الرَّحْمَانَ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ And our Lord is the most merciful. We seek His assistance against what you describe Him with. Our Lord is the most merciful whose help is sought Against what you claim. وَرَبُّنَا Our Lord Ar-Rahman Is the absolutely, infinitely most merciful. Al-Musta'an Whose help is sought عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ Against what you claim, against what you describe. مِنْ كِذِّبِكُمْ عَنَ اللَّهِ In terms of your lies against Allah. In terms of the lies that you have fabricated and invented against Allah. في قولكم particularly in your statement اتخذ ولدا that God has taken offspring or God has taken children وعلي and also upon me the lies that you fabricate against me by saying ساحر that he is a magician وعلى القرآن and the lies that you invent and fabricate against the Quran by saying شعر so Allah is the one whose help is sought against what you claim regarding him regarding me and regarding the quran and regarding the divinity and oneness of allah regarding the truthfulness of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and regarding the truthfulness of the quran and that brings us to the end of surah al-anbiya the next surah is surah al-hajj and the surah has been given the title of Surah Al-Hajj uh, because in this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announces the obligation of Hajj through Ibrahim Al-Khalil alayhi salam and it also speaks about certain rites and rituals that are related to Hajj as well after building, after reconstructing the Kaaba Ibrahim alayhi salam was told to announce Hajj to all of mankind so he announced it and his voice was made to reach across the world. And from that day, people of faith, people of Iman have been responding to that call saying, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. At your service, O oh Allah, here I am at your service. So this is the 22nd chapter of the Quran. Right? This is the 22nd surah of the Quran. And it is made up of 78 verses. And there is a correlation. There is a munasabah between Surah Al-Hajj and Surah Al-Anbiya. That at the end of Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the Day of Judgment and some of the events that will take place on that terrifying day. And similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts Surah Al-Hajj with a description 
of some of the frightening events that will take place on the Day of Judgment. In Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala briefly mentions the stories of more than 10 different prophets. And those stories revolved around their struggles and sacrifices to establish the oneness of Allah. They highlighted the battle between Iman and Kufr, between faith and disbelief, truth and falsehood. And they strengthened people's Iman in the concept of resurrection and life after death. In Surah Al-Hajj, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala provides rational as well as observational proofs for His existence, oneness and power. And He also provides rational and observational proofs for the reality of resurrection and life after death. So both surahs discuss the most fundamental aspects of Iman, but they present them in different ways. Now in terms of subject matter, um, Surah Al-Hajj deals primarily with the fundamental aspects of our system of belief. So it speaks about the oneness of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, drawing our attention to the signs and proofs of His existence, might, power and magnificence that are spread throughout the universe. It also mentions the importance of being prepared for the last day. It describes some scenes from the Day of Judgment and it provides evidence and proof for resurrection and explains the fallacy of pagan beliefs. And it also talks about the obligation of Hajj. That's why it's called Surah Al-Hajj along with some of its rites and rituals. And the Surah appeals to our sense of Iman by strengthening our Iman, by strengthening our Taqwa and by increasing our willingness to submit and surrender ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, قال Imam Jalaluddin al-Mahalli rahimahullah, Surah al-Hajj, Makkiyatun. So here he highlights that this surah is classified as a Makkan surah, meaning it was revealed before the migration of the Prophet sallallahu from Mecca to Medina. Then he says, Illa وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ الْآيَتَيْنِ Except for وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ And he, except for these two verses that start with وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ right, That verse and the verse after it they are madani They were revealed after migration أَوْ إِلَّا هَذَانِ خصمان. Or except هَذَانِ خَصْمَانِ أَسِتْ آيَات فَمَدَنِيَاتٌ That these six verses are classified as being madaniyya meaning they were revealed after migration that is one position that is one opinion uh, most say that it is Meccan it is a Meccan surah wa hiya arba'un then he highlights that there's a little bit of ikhtilaf in the number of verses in the surah he says wa hiya arba'un aw khamsun aw sittun aw sab'un aw thamanin wa sab'una ayah it is either 74 75, 76, 77, or 78 verses long. And according to the copies of the Mus'haf that are prevalent in our communities and you know throughout the world, it is made up of 78 verses. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةَ السَّاعَةِ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَى وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَى وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَيَتَّبِعُ كُلَّ شَيْطَانٍ مَرِيدٍ كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ مَنْ تَوَلَّاهُ فَأَنَّهُ يُضِلُّهُ وَيَهْدِيهِ إِلَى عَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِن كُنْتُمْ فِي غَيْبٍ مِّنَ الْبَعْثِ فَإِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ فَإِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ ثُمَّ مِنْ عَلَقَةٍ 
ثم من علقة ثم من مضغة مخلقة وغير مخلقة لنبين لكم ونقر في الأرحام ما نشاء إلى أجل مسمى ثم نخرجكم طفلا ثم لتبلغوا أشدكم ومنكم من يتوفى ومنكم من يرد إلى أرض للعمر لكي لا يعلم من بعد علم شيئا ومنكم من يتوفى ومنكم من يرد إلى أرض للعمر لكي لا يعلم من بعد علم شيئا وترى الأرض هامدة فإذا أنزلنا عليها الماء اهتزت وربت اهتزت وربت وأنبتت من كل زوج بهيج قال رحمه الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس أي أهل مكة وغيرهم اتقوا ربكم أي عقابه بأن تطيعوه إن زلزلة الساعة أي الحركة الشديدة للأرض التي يكون بعدها طلوع الشمس من مغربها الذي هو قرب الساعة شيء عظيم في إزعاج الناس الذي هو نوع من العقاب يوم ترونها تذهل بسببها كل مرضعة بالفعل عما أرضعت أي تنساه وتضع كل ذات حمل أي حبلا حملها وترى الناس سكارى من شدة الخوف وما هم بسكارى من الشراب ولكن عذاب الله شديد فهم يخافونه الله سبحانه وتعالى starts off سورة الحج in a very powerful emotive manner and it is meant to strike fear into our hearts fear of the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayyuhal nasu attaqu rabbakum O mankind O people, O humanity Ittaqu rabbakum Fear your Lord Be mindful, be conscious, be aware of your Lord Why? Inna zalzalata sa'ati shay'un azim For the violent quaking the violent shaking at the hour is surely a terrible thing. For the earthquake of the last hour will be shay'un azim, will be a great thing. So here Imam al-Mahalli says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, O people, O humanity. And then Imam al-Mahalli rahimullah specifies it. He says it's referring to Ahl Makkah wa ghayrahum. It's referring to the people of Mecca because those were the initial addressees of the Qur'an. That was the initial audience of the Qur'an. وَغَيْرَهُمْ And also is referring to others, meaning, O mankind, O humanity, اِتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ Be mindful, be conscious, be aware of your Lord, fear your Lord. اِعِقَابَهُ Fear His punishment بِأَن تُطِيعُوهُ By obeying Him. Fear his punishment by obeying him. Why? Inna zalzalata sa'a. Because truly the shaking, the quaking of the hour. A. Al harakata shadida lil ard. The severe shaking of the earth. Alati yakunu ba'daha tulu shamsi min maghribiha. After which the sun will rise from the west. الذي هو قرب الساعة which is right before or which is near the hour شيء عظيم is something very great is something terrible something mighty إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم that truly the shaking the quaking of the hour is a great thing في إزعاج الناس and causing harm and trouble and inconvenience to people. الذي هو نوع من العقاب which is a type of punishment. So this earthquake that's being referred to 
according to Imam Al-Mahalli rahimahullah, is a very violent and severe earthquake that will take place before the Day of Judgment. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ The day you see it, or on the day you see it, every nursing mother will abandon what she is nursing. وَطَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا And every expecting woman will deliver her burden prematurely. وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَ And you will see people as if they were drunk. وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَ Though they are not drunk. وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ But the punishment of Allah is severe. Another translation reads, On the day you see it, every nursing mother will think no more of her baby. Every pregnant female will miscarry. You will think people are drunk when they are not. So severe will be Allah's punishment. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا On the day you see it. Meaning after this violent, severe earthquake. تَذْهَلُوا بِسَبَبِهَا كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ Every nursing mother, because of it, and because of this severe earthquake, and because of the horrors and terrors of the Day of Judgment, will forget about who they're nursing. Eitansahu. So every nursing mother will forget about who she's nursing. Meaning that's how much fear and that's how much horror, that's how much fright there's going to be on that day. وَطَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا And every pregnant woman will miscarry. Every pregnant woman will deliver her burden prematurely. So, وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ Right, every expecting woman, every pregnant woman, a hubla, hamlaha, will deliver her burden prematurely, and they'll miscarry out of the fear and horror and severity of that day. And you will see people as if they are drunk. Min shiddatil khawf because of the severity of fear, because of the extreme fear. But they're not drunk. Min sharab. They're not drunk from, you know, alcoholic beverages. وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ But rather the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe. فَهُمْ يَخَافُونَهُ So they fear it. قَالَ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ وَنَزَلَ فِي النَّظْرِ بْنِ الْحَارِثِ وَجَمَاعَةٍ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ قَالُوا الْمَلَائِكَةُ بَنَاتُ اللَّهِ وَالْقُرْآنُ أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَأَنْكَرُوا الْبَعْثَ وَإِحْيَاءَ مَنْ صَارَ تُرَابًا وَيَتَّبِعُوا فِي جِدَالِهِ كُلَّ شَيْطَانٍ مَرِيدٍ أي مُتَمَرِّدٍ كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِ قُضِيَ عَلَى الشَّيْطَانِ أَنَّهُ مَنْ تَوَلَّاهُ أي اتَّبَعَهُ فَأَنَّهُ يُضِلُّهُ وَيَهْدِيهِ يَدْعُوهُ إِلَى عَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ أي النار. Right In the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about a certain category of people, يعني a certain Category of non-believers. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَيَتَّبِعُ كُلَّ شَيْطَانٍ مَرِيدٍ There are some who argue about Allah without knowledge and follow every rebellious devil. And here Imam Al-Mahalli starts off by highlighting the background or the context in which this verse was revealed. He says, وَنَزَلَ فِي النَّظْرِ بْنِ الْحَالِثِ وَجَمَاعَةٍ That this verse was revealed regarding النَّظْرُ بْنُ الْحَالِثِ and a group of non-believers. النَّظْرُ بْنُ الْحَالِثِ was one of the open enemies of Islam. Someone who opposed and rejected the Prophet ﷺ and caused him a lot of inconvenience and you know would often harass the Prophet ﷺ and would dissuade people from listening to him and listening to the truth. So this particular verse was revealed regarding him, وَجَمَاعَةٍ and a group of non-believers like him. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ right, Among mankind, مَنْ يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ are those who argue about Allah without knowledge. 
And they said, Al Malaika to Banatullah. Right? They claimed without any knowledge whatsoever that the angels are the daughters of God. Well Quran Asatiru al Awalin. And that the Quran is ancient tales. Wa ankaru al Ba'tha. And they denied resurrection. Wa ihya amman sara tu Raban. And they denied that whoever has been turned to dust will be brought back to life. And in their argumentation, in their debate, they're following every rebellious devil. Right? They're following every rebellious devil. It has been decreed for such devils that whoever takes them as a guide will be misguided. And led by them into the punishment of the blaze. Right? Fated to lead astray those who take his side and guide them to the suffering of the blazing flame. So it says here, uh, Imam al Mahalli rahimahullah, Kutiba alayhi, Qudiya ala shaytan. Kutiba alayhi. It has been decreed upon him, meaning, Qudiya uh, alayhi. Yani Qudiya ala shaytan. It has been decreed for the devil. Annahu. Man tawallahu That whoever takes him as a guide Whoever takes shaitan as a wali As a guardian, as a protector, as a guide A ittaba'uhu meaning whoever follows shaitan فَأَنَّهُ يُضِلُّهُ That shaitan will lead that person astray وَيَهْدِيهِ يَدْعُوهُ And will lead him and call him إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ السَّعِيلِ To the punishment of the fire, of the blaze A annar that has been decreed for shaitan. Whoever follows Satan, then Satan will lead that person astray and Satan will call him towards the fire. Qala rahimahullah, Ya ayyuhal nasu ay ahla Makkah, in kuntum fi raybin shakkin min al ba'hi, fa inna khalaqnakum ay aslakum adama min turab, thumma khalaqna dhurriyatahu min nutfatin maniyin. ثم من علقة وهي الدم الجامد ثم من مضغة وهي لحمة قدر ما ينضغ مخلقة مصورة تامة الخلق وغير مخلقة أي غير تامة الخلق لنبين لكم كمال قدرتنا لتستدل بها في ابتداء الخلق على إعادته ونقر مستأنف في الأرحام ما نشاء إلى أجل مسمى وقت خروجه ثم نخرجكم من بطون أمهاتكم طفلا بمعنى أطفالا ثم نعمركم لتبلغوا أشدكم أي الكمال والقوة وهو ما بين الثلاثين إلى الأربعين سنة ومنكم من يتوفى يموت قبل بلوغ الأشد ومنكم من يرد إلى أرض للعمر أخصه من الهرم والخرف لكي لا يعلم من بعد علم شيئا قال عكرمة من قرأ القرآن لم يصر بهذه الحالة وترى الأرض هامدة يابسة فإذا أنزلنا عليها الماء اهتزت تحركت وربت ارتفعت وزادت وأنبتت من زائدة كل زوج صنف بهيج حسن Here Allah سبحانه وتعالى is mentioning the stages of embryonic development. And essentially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the entire life cycle of a human being here to highlight his might, his power, his magnificence, and his glory. This highlights the ultimate might and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it serves as irrefutable proof and evidence that he will bring the dead back to life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by addressing all of mankind Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, O humanity, in kuntum fi raybin min al ba'thi, if you are in doubt about resurrection, fa inna khalaqnakum min turan, then know that we created you from dirt, thumma min nutfa, then from a drop of semen, thumma min alaqa, then we developed you into a clinging clot of blood, thumma min mudgha, then a lump of flesh, مُخَلَّقَ, fully formed, وَغَيْرِ مُخَلَّقَ, or unformed, لِنُبَيِّنَ لَكُمْ 
in order to demonstrate our might and power to you. وَنُقِرُّ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ مَا نَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى Then we settle whatever we will in the womb for an appointed time. ثُمَّ نُخْرِجُكُمْ طِفْلًا Then we bring you forth as infants. ثُمَّ لِتَبْلُغُوا أَشُدَّكُمْ So that you may reach your prime. وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُتَوَفَّى وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ أَرْضٍ الْعُمُرِ لِكَيْ لَا يَعْنَمَ مِنْ بَعْدِ عِلْمٍ شَيْئًا Some of you may die young, while others are left to reach the most feeble stage of life, so that they may know nothing after having known much. وَتَرَى الْأَرْضَ هَامِدًا And you see the earth lifeless. فَإِذَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا الْمَاءَ But as soon as we send down rain upon it, اِهْتَزَّتْ It begins to stir to life. وَرَبَتْ And swell. وَأَنْبَتَتْ مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجٍ بَهِيجٍ Producing every type of pleasant plant. This is a very powerful verse. It's a very profound verse that is highlighting the might, the power, the glory, the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It highlights the entire cycle of life. So here Imam al-Mahani says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, a ahla Mecca, O people of Mecca. Again, because the initial audience of these verses were the people of Mecca. So Imam al-Mahalli chooses to make it specific, but it could be understood as being general. It refers to anyone who has doubts regarding life after death and resurrection. Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, O people, O humanity, O people of Mecca, in kuntum fi raybin shakkim min al ba'thi. If you are in doubt about resurrection, fa inna khalaqnakum min turab. Then know that we created you from turab. A asnakum Adam. We created your origin. We created the father of mankind, Adam salam, min turabin, from dust. Thumma khalaqna dhurriyatahu min nutfatin. Then we created his offspring. We created his progeny from nutfa, maniyin, from semen, from a drop of reproductive fluid. Thumma min alaqa. Then from an alaqa. An alaqa is usually translated as a blood clot. Wahiya damul jamidu. Right? A, a, a clot of blood. So here Allah is highlighting the stages of embryonic development. And as we're told in a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ says that you know you remain in this stage for about 40 days. Right? First you are a nutfa for 40 days, and then the next 40 days you're an alaqa. And then the next 40 days you're a mudra. Right? Thumma min alaqa. And here he says, wahiya damul jamid. It's referring to solid, or I guess the word for it is congealed blood, right? a blood clot. Thumma min mudra. Then from a lump of flesh. Mudra is a lump of flesh, it's referring to the embryo. Wahiya luhmatun qadru ma yumdaq. Right? It's a piece of flesh. The size of what is chewed. Mukhallaqa, fully formed. Musawwaratan, right? Formed and shaped with a head and a torso and limbs and toes and hands and fingers. Tamat al khalq, in a complete form and creation. Waghayni mukhallaqa, but sometimes the embryo is underdeveloped or undeveloped and unformed. A ghayra tamat al khalq. It might, there might be there's some limbs missing, some pieces missing, some deformities. Allahu a'lam. لِنُبَيِّنَ لَكُمْ So that we can make clear to you كَمَالَ قُدْرَتِنَا We can make clear to you our total might and power. Our complete might and power. لِتَسْتَدِلُّ بِهَا So that you can use this as an evidence, as a proof فِبْتِدَاءِ الْخَلْقِ عَلَىٰ إِعَادَتِهِ that you can use the initial creation as a proof and evidence for us being able to repeat it. And Allah is providing a very simple, logical, rational proof and argument for the reality and possibility of resurrection. That just as I created you initially, I can recreate you and bring you back to life. وَنُقِرُ مُسْتَأْنِفٌ A new sentence. 
ونقر في الأرحام ما نشاء إلى أجل مسمى. And we settle whatever we will in the womb for an appointed period of time. And we نقر في الأرحام. We settle in the wombs ما نشاء whatever we will إلى أجل مسمى until an appointed time وقت خروجه. And it's time of exit, meaning basically a time of delivery. ثم نخرجكم من بطون أمهاتكم طفلا. And then we bring you forth from the wombs of your mothers as infants. طفلا بمعنى أطفالا as infants. ثم نعمركم. And then we give you life. Right. Then we allow you to live year after year. لتبلغ أشدكم. Until you reach your prime. Right, until you reach your prime. Ashuddakum. A al kamal wal quwa. You reach like uh, your completeness and full strength. And then he says that according to you know most mufassirun and ulama, they say that al ashudda is usually at the age of 40. Here he says it's what's between the age of 30 and 40. That's your prime. That's when you're at the top, in the prime of your life in terms of your mental and physical faculties. وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُتَوَفَّى But among you, some of you may die young. Right? Some die young. يَمُوتُ قَبْلَ بُلُوغِ الْأَشُدْ They pass away before reaching their prime. وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ أَرْضَ لِلْعُمُرِ And some are left to live on to such an age that they forget all they once know. أَرْضَ لِلْعُمُرِ the worst of age. Akhasihi. Many the worst of, of age and the worst portion of life. Min al harami wal kharafi. In terms of old age and senility. Likayla ya'nama min ba'di ilmin shay'a. So that they may know nothing after having known much. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that according to his qadr and his qadha, or according to his divine will and divine decree. There are some that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to live until they reach their prime. And some people might die before that, and some people might live even way beyond that. And they will reach such an age that's considered to be arda lil umr. It's considered to be the worst type of age because that's when a person starts losing their physical and mental faculties and abilities. And they become weak and they become dependent upon others. And they start losing their memory and they get dementia. Right? قَالَ عِكْرِمَ عِكْرِمَ رَحِمُ اللَّهِ He said, مَنْ قَرَأَ الْقُرْآنِ Whoever recites the Qur'an لَمْ يَصِرْ بِهَذِهِ الْحَالَةِ Will not end up in this state. They will not end up in this extremely old age where they don't remember anything. If a person recites the Qur'an and memorizes it and acts upon it, Allah will save them and protect them from experiencing then Allah brings another example of vegetation and crops that we see. And you see the earth lifeless, yabisa, totally dry. And then when we send water down upon that dry land, it stirs, it stirs back to life. And it swells and grows. Right, it وزادت. Right, it rises and increases. وأنبتت من كل زوج بهيج, and produces every kind of pleasant growth or every kind of joyous plant. He says, min here, grammatically speaking, is زائدة. It is extra. زوج سنف type, بهيج حسن beautiful. So I am just about out of time for today. Alhamdulillah, we completed Surah Al Anbiya. And then we also started Surah Al-Hajj. We reached until verse number 5. So in our next lesson, we will start off with verse number 6 of Surah Al-Hajj. May Allah accept this effort of ours and place it on our scale of good deeds on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Qur'an a proof for us, not a proof against us. May the Qur'an be an intercessor for us on the Day of Judgment. جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته